On this episode, I have a couple of announcements to make, some to do with YouTube and some not. And we're going to go over how I shot and edited an astro photo. Dave talks about live photos and what you can do with those. And then we look at our recent photos. It's Monday, October 10th, 2022, and this is the iPhoneography Podcast. Uh, my name is Greg McMillan. I'm joined by my good pal, Dave Podner. Hello, Dave. How you doing, Greg? Doing good tonight? Doing very well. This is our. This is actually our Thanksgiving day here in Canada. We oh, have ours yes. oh, a few weeks before you guys do, I guess. And uh, mm-hmm. um, it's been a wonderful weekend for weather. Oh, and um, Great to hear. So I was able to get some fall pictures and stuff, but we'll get onto that later uh how about you what have you been up to in the last couple of weeks um well you had this a run is, i see I, I, yeah I, I have actually had two runs since our last show oh right on. um yeah one a uh, little more photographic than the other um <laughs> the, the like one as in the uh, area that it was in or yeah yeah um the one last weekend was a run on the airport runway Oh yeah, yeah. So, I saw those pictures. Uh, yeah. So it's very flat, and being being exceptionally flat, it's hard to get any decent photos because it, you're, you need height to get, especially when there's a long string of people. You need yeah. that height above you to get that photo of you know here's a long string of people that you can yeah. show. Because so now you, so now you know what the challenges are for people who take pictures in Saskatchewan. <laughs> <laughs> it is so, so flat yeah. out there. Oh, uh, yeah. It, it's, it, and that's unusual. I mean, Pittsburgh's not flat. No. You know, it's hard to get flat areas. So, but the airport, obviously, you have to be flat. So, and it's on the runway. Yeah. So yeah. it's very, very flat. Um, and it was a kind of gray, overcast day. There were sprinkles. So it wasn't exactly you know, the, the greatest photography. And like I said, you're looking around, you're literally seeing flat. Yep. <laughs> um, no nice rolling hills. The colors aren't out. And like, like you're starting to hit color. We're getting color in another week or two, probably. Yeah. Uh, the, the run last yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. It's one of those, you know, time is fluid anymore. Yeah. Uh, the run yesterday <laughs> was actually in downtown Pittsburgh. So a hillier, so you can mm-hmm. get some nice perspectives. Um, a lot more varied because you got cityscapes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yep, going over a couple bridges, going through a tunnel, which is a little different for a run. Um, and it was kind of sunny, so you were able to play with the the shadows and the lights going on. Yeah. So a li- like I said, a little more photographic and. Um, well, kind of tying in with 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 Canadian Thanksgiving Day, which I know you don't call Canadian Thanksgiving Day because it's Thanksgiving Day for you, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like we don't call it U.S. Thanksgiving. But um, the person greeting you at the finish line, uh, because it is a charity, it's the Lemieux charity run, is Mario Lemieux himself. No way. The owner, yeah, the owner of the Pens. Wow, cool. Yep. yep. So the two charities that get money from the race are the Penguins Foundation, which mm-hmm. works for youth hockey, and the Mario Lemieux Foundation works works on cancer research. Okay. Because Mario did have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma 30 years ago. So yeah. after he recovered from that, he started a cancer foundation. So huh. he's there at the start line, waving, cheering you on. And then he's at the finish line, giving everyone high fives as they finish. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Well, that's, that's nice of him to do that. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, like they're, they're getting hot and heavy into the start of the season, but he takes time out to do that mm-hmm. for the for the run. I thought that, that that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, oh, and for uh, people who are not sports fans, um, Mario is a very famous hockey player. Yes. So yeah. if, if you're in the U.S., you probably don't follow hockey much. But Mario is, if you want to start a fight with someone, probably top two hockey player of all time. Yeah, he's up there. That's for darn sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and he played his whole career in Pittsburgh, did he not? He did. He played yeah. his whole career in Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> he started when he was 18 and drafted. 
in yeah. 84, retired once um, due to health issues, came back, mm -hmm. said he wanted to play because his son's old enough. He, he, his son, he wanted to play for his, have his son watch him. Yeah. But while he was, he was like the biggest player in the franchise, the franchise did go bankrupt when he was playing for him. Oh. He basically said, I will trade the salary you owe me for equity in the team. Oh, nice. So that's how he owned. That's how he changed to become the owner of the team. Yeah. It was like, oh, the team's bankrupt. You guys can't pay me, but make me part owner. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he well, is part he's owner of the back team. Considerably then. Oh, yes. Most definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, okay, so we are going to talk about a couple of things here. Um, but first, I want to uh, make a couple of announcements. Um, if you follow the iPhonography podcast YouTube channel, you will have noticed that David Addison put out a video and uh, he interviewed me. And uh, that's only the second time anybody's interviewed me for our own stuff here. But um, what he, the, the, the reason he did that is because, and th this is going to segue into the next part here, but before we get there, um, I put a picture on Instagram, or actually, I think I just shared it to him personally, and he thought it was just amazing. And it's a picture of, I call it a hydro pole at night. And but in behind it is the Milky Way. So again, we're getting into that in more detail after. But um, he really, really, really liked this photo, and he wanted me to talk about uh, behind the scenes with the photo and how I did it and all that stuff. And so in the interview, um, you know, we show it, we talk about it, all this stuff. But then we also talked about the thoughts of me doing a. Um, basically my own YouTube tutorials. And I would thought about it in the past, but I really never, uh, it really never went anywhere in my mind. So, but I've been thinking about it more and more. And uh, David thought I should do, you know, stuff like this um, astrophotography, but no way. Uh -uh. That is Shane Mostyn's wheelhouse. And I am not even going there because he's the king. So that's, you know, I will not do any tutorials on um, on astrophotography, maybe night photography, but I doubt it. But what I think I might do is tutorials on macro photography with an iPhone. I mean, I have a book coming out sometime. I don't know when. <laughs> I wish I could tell you. But um, uh I thought, well, you know what? I could probably do those, uh, but I'm not putting myself in a schedule. No start date. Don't, you know, don't even ask me when it's coming out. Uh, it'll just surprise. I'll just surprise you. It's going to be on my own YouTube channel, not the podcast channel. And um, I just got to figure out how I'm going to go about it and see what happens. You know, I can't guarantee it's going to be a video a week or anything like that. Um, my work schedule takes up a lot of time. So, this is only going to be done on my free time and, uh, you know, it'll be when it'll be. So that's something that I think I'm going to give a try. I, if it, you know, if it works out, if it kind of takes off, then I'll keep doing more. But if, if after the first couple or so, uh, you know, they kind of flop, then, you know, I could just say I tried it and see what happens from there. But, uh, uh, the other announcement oh, uh, also relating to YouTube is, I've been on Shane Mostyn's live streams a few times. And on the last one, we kind of talked a little bit about maybe having me on um, as a regular. So it would be Shane and myself and then have a third person on as a guest. And we can ask them questions, talk about their work, show pictures and stuff like that. So I, there's one coming up this Friday. And... Uh, I, I got to get a hold of Shane and see if he's got a guest lined up or anything else. But, um, you know, look look for me there. Uh, it's on his YouTube channel, Shane Mostyn Mobile Photography, I think it's called. And um, 
Uh, now there's time changing going on around the world this time of year. Mm-hmm. Ours doesn't go for about another three weeks yet, almost four weeks before ours changes here in, in where I live. Uh, some places in the world it doesn't change. Now Shane's is going to change at some point. So I'm not sure what time of day it's going to be this Friday. But for me, it was 4 p.m. Eastern. And it, as far as I know, it's still going to be the same. But if his time has already changed, it could be three. It could I think be five. his time has changed. I think his time time has changed. Has it? Okay. Because, yeah, because <clears throat> it was in the mid 2000s that the U.S. changed to extend daylight savings for yes. whatever stupid reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Canada just said, well, we'll match the U.S. because it'll cause too much trouble if we're off by – if we're like three weeks different. Yeah. But Australia, they're because on a different uh, they're, different yeah, yeah, they're far enough away. It's not an issue. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll 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 find out from him uh, what the time difference is if it's changed already and all that stuff. So, um, and then you know, so look forward to that. I'll I'll have links to his channel in the show notes and and uh, I'll even put a link to my own channel in there. You can see what I've already put up. I don't have many videos up. I don't have many subscribers, but um, you know that's the plan. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, also. Uh, this Friday coming up, as as we record, um, so it'll be October 14th, I believe, um, I will be co-hosting the iPhone Photo Show with Jefferson Graham. And uh, if you listen to that podcast, you'll know that the last episode was Scott Bourne's last one. And uh, for a couple of reasons, the main reason is his health, he's do- dealing with the health issues. But he's also completed his one-year experiment with shooting with the iPhone as his main camera. And, um, you know, he explains all that on the last show. So uh, if you want to know what's going on with Scott Bourne, you know, check it out. Uh, give it a listen. And um, and I'll be on as, as a co-host on uh, on the show ne- on the next episode. So uh, there's that to look forward to. Okay. So now. So, so pretty much Greg will be everywhere. <laughs> you, you turn you turn on your podcast player you will hear greg you go to youtube you will see greg <laughs> spinning well, the world <laughs> i just really i just really love this stuff and uh oh yeah i could, I could talk about it all day long you know you know it's, me, it's definitely a good thing. oh yeah i know it's, it's definitely a good thing now i'll say this before we moved on you were mentioning that david said that your photo fo- your photo was good in the night sky yeah no your photo is good of the night it is eye popping <laughs> okay i i don't want you to downplay it it is definitely an eye popping photo of the milky way well thanks man i I appreciate that it is uh, oh, it, and, you know, i and, was pretty happy with the way it turned out so oh yeah and a little translation uh for those not, who don't live near a um a dam to get their power hydro lines are basically power lines Yes, yeah, we call them hydro poles here in, in, right. in where I live right. in Canada. Um, right. Yeah, and I, I'm I think sure if there's you live, yeah, you know, there's power and, and lines, I, and, uh, utility yeah. poles. Um, there's other other names for them, but yeah, um, but yeah, that's so. That's what I'm going to talk about now is how I shot and edited this shot. And um, so, Dave, he's got the before and after to have a look at while we're talking about this. And it will also be on the podcast player, as long as it's not Spotify uh, or Anchor. Um, you know, you can you can see the images that we talk about in Apple Podcasts, in Overcast, in um, Pocket Casts, and I'm not sure what other podcast players. But if you can't see them, go to the website, iPhonography.ca, and in the post for this episode, you will be able to see the images that we talk about, not only in this case here, but also when we do our recent photos. We're going to start posting on the website now because not everybody um, uses those podcast players. So, the pro- the, you know, they're going to miss out. And uh, um, y- you can actually, you'll, you obviously get a better look at them on the website too. So uh, there'll be a link to the website. There'll be a link to the post on the website. Um, for this episode where you can just go right to it and and go down the post and you'll be able to see the images that we talk about. So 
Um, so this hydropole, <clears throat> I I took it. Uh, I believe it was a week and a half ago. It was on a Friday night, and I got off work early. Uh, I got, actually I got off. I, I went into work, and I only had to stay for an hour, and I was able to leave because there wasn't much to do that night. But um, and that doesn't happen very often. But my boss was. He said, "Well." You might as well go if you want. So, okay, I left. And it when I left and walked out to the parking lot, by then it was already dark, but it was crystal clear out. So I thought, okay, I'm going to check out the uh, uh, Milky Way and see where it is. And when I pulled up this <clears throat> this app called Sky View, I think it's called. Just let me d- double check here real quick. Sky View, yeah. and. Um, in the app shows where everything is stars moon uh you know the sun the milky way the galaxies all that stuff so all i had to do is hold the phone up and it's kind of like augmented reality so i hold the phone up and i can see where the milky way is and i was you know looking around um until i got it into view and i could see okay well it's kind of not really it's kind of above the horizon but not very well So in the app, you can adjust the time and the date and see where it will be at a certain time. So I bumped it up to 11 o'clock later that night, and it was going to be a good part of it. Not all of it, but about almost a half of it was going to be above the horizon and pointing in a certain direction. So I thought, okay, great. I'm going to go at 11 o'clock. I'm going to drive out of town. It was about a 10-minute drive because there's no way I would get this in town. There's too much light pollution. So I went out of town, uh, went out to this area that I knew of where if I stopped on the side of the road and looked in that direction, I'd know I would get a nice shot of it. It would be dark enough I could do that. So I went out there, got out of the car, set my tripod up, put my iPhone 14 Pro Max on, in the holder on the tripod. And and these instructions are uh, exactly how Shane Mostyn teaches how to do it. Because he's a great coach. <clears throat> so I pointed the phone up there uh, and I, I kind of wanted something of interest in the foreground. And I thought, okay, great, there's a hydropole. There wasn't any trees that were, there was some, you know, very low in the horizon, but the hydropole and the lines were perfectly positioned for this kind of shot. So I positioned myself so the, the Milky Way would be right behind the pole. All I did was I, I didn't even tap to focus or nothing. I just, aimed the phone, put it on night mode, made it a 30 second shot because it was on the tripod, hit the th- used a three second timer and took the shot. And I just took a few different ones to um, adjust where the pole was, the hydro pole in the in the shot in the frame. And Bob's your uncle, you're done. I got the shot. So now that was the easy part. Well, maybe not the easy part, but it was the uh the quick part, the, the 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 more interesting part is in the editing. And I'm going to put screenshots to the editing settings uh, on the website so that you can see the adjustments that I made. But just to kind of review them, all I did was I, so now you've been looking at the before while I've been talking about this. And now you should look at your screen and you'll see the after if you're in one of those podcast apps. And basically what I did was I decreased the exposure slightly. I took the contrast up almost halfway, back the highlights down a little more more than halfway, increased the shadows almost halfway, increased the whites almost halfway. And what that does is when I increase the whites, it makes the stars pop a little better in the sky. And and then I decreased the blacks. Um, that was all under the the light um, section of Lightroom Mobile. And then in the color section, um, I think I toned down the color temperature a little bit just to you know just to get the color cast of the galactic core a little more to my liking. And then I increased the vibrance and the saturation a little bit. Nothing, no, no major moves with the with the vibrance and sat, saturation, but just enough to make it pop a little bit. 
And then in the effects panel, these two settings are vital for this kind of work. And that's why Lightroom Mobile is probably the best app to do this in. And I, I bumped up the clarity about 20% <clears throat> and the dehaze up to about 70%. And again, you'll see these settings um, uh, as screenshots on the website. Uh, but what the clarity and the dehaze does is it really brings out the galactic core. I mean, if you want to see this done, Go to Shane Mawson's YouTube channel and look for a video where he edits a, a, a shot of the Milky Way because that's basically what I've done. And uh, and I think other than that, all I did was I increased the sharpening just a little wee bit. And uh, oh, and the noise reduction, I've taken it up and back down on the detail. You know, again, these these all these will be in screenshots and on the um, uh, on the website. And and that was it. I mean, those settings, they're going to be different for different types of pictures that you do, that you try with this. <clears throat> but basically, taking the shot is a 30-second night mode shot. You know, just make sure you've got your composition where you want it. And uh, now you, there's different ways you can go about this, too. You can, uh, you know, if you have trees in the foreground, you can light them up with a flashlight real quick to add, you know, give foreground interest. But um, uh, you know, basically a 30 second night shot and then all those, those um, d different adjustments in uh, Lightroom mobile that you can do kind of this kind of thing in Snapseed. It's, it's pretty good for editing a photo like this, but I really think Lightroom mobile and none of these, none of these adjustments are where you need to subscribe. It's, these are part of the free thing because I don't pay for Lightroom mobile. So anybody can do these and, uh, you know, Lightroom Mobile, I think, is the best one for editing these things. So that's the before and the after about how and and mm -hmm. the, the method I used to get this shot. So what do you think, Dave? You want to try it? <laughs> if if I had a darker sky, yes. Yeah, you live in a, but, but, in but, a... but heavily polluted, light polluted area. I should say light polluted. The overall pollution's nominal but yeah light pollutions now that's what, one thing i wanted to ask because looking at the unedited photo which mm -hmm. i know the the camera cannot our eyes can pick up a lot more than the camera can well actually the camera picked up a lot more than my eyes did that's for sure okay well that's what i was wondering because when you look up you know not through the image but if you can remember when you looked up to the sky Mm -hmm. Could you see the Milky Way with the naked eye? You can see a little more um, density in the stars. You, so you could tell that, yes, that's the Milky Way, but you could not okay. see the galactic core. Now, if I had stayed outside there without any, you know, I was using the um, uh, the flashlight on my old iPhone you know, to help me oh. get set up and everything else, right? Okay, if, yeah, if that I, messes you, that'll mess up your eyes. Yeah. yeah. So if I had stayed there for like ten minutes without looking at anything but the sky, I mm -hmm. may have been able to see it better. But I still don't know if I'd see the galactic core. But um, okay. But yeah, I don't well, know how also, well the eye could see the the core at all. Okay. I was wondering how much could you pick up any of the colors that you could see in the finished photo. Uh, not with a naked eye, no. Okay, okay. It, and this is coming from someone who has never seen the Milky Way in the sky. Right, yeah. You know, yeah. I the the only time I would have had a chance to do it, well, I would say, no, even that wouldn't have worked. Um, the, I would say the only one time I had a chance to do it was when I went to summer camp in Boy Scouts because summer camp was out in the middle of nowhere with almost no artificial lights away from any minor, let alone large city. Yeah. And I just, in my teens, didn't even think about, you're out here. I mean, I even tried taking the astronomy merit badge, but I could never say, you know, it's like, oh, this is the constellation, blah, 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 blah. Right, and I'm yeah. like, I, I can't, 
that's <laughs> that's supposed to be Taurus. I don't see a bull. I can't. I know, right? <laughs> I, I see the picture in the book that says bull, and here's the sky, but I can't. Where I can't. I no. I don't understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, when I was young, I learned a few of the constellations. Um, you know, Cassiopeia, I think it's called uh, Orion the Hunter. Of course, the Big and Little Dipper. Right. Other than that, I couldn't tell you any of the other ones. I don't even know where yeah. they are. Um, but um, uh, yeah, you, and so if you want to check your uh, location for you know the level of light pollution, go to light pollution info.com i think it is uh, right. and you can find your location and and click on it and it'll tell you what the bordel scale is for that location now shane mawson he lives out in the middle of nowhere in australia and he is like a bordel class one maybe even yeah. a zero at times where that is ideal for this kind of stuff and that's why he does it mm -hmm. where i was believe it or not it's a bordel class four so the higher the number, the more light pollution there is. Right, right. But looking that direction, there were no, uh, you know, behind me were um, the lights from the small city that I live in. So they were glowing. <clears throat> and if you look at the image of the of the, the edited image on the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see just a slight glow. That <clears throat> glow, as you looked across the sky to the left, further to the left, was a massive glow, and that was Toronto. That was the oh, city wow. of Toronto, which is two, a two-and-a-half-hour drive from me, and that was glowing in the sky. And for some reason, I don't know if it was, you know, air temperature, may maybe moisture in the air, I don't know what it was, but it was really, really glowing that night, and I don't really recall seeing it glow that much. But, um, I mean, so luckily... The Milky Way was in a position that wasn't near that glower. I wouldn't have been able to get the shot. I would have just right. give up. But uh, but yeah, you you know. So go to lightpollutioninfo.com. I think it's dot com. I'll put a link to it in the show notes and um, find out what the Bortle class rating is for where you are. And if it's uh, you know uh, Definitely one, two, three probably wouldn't be too too bad. But you know, you got to get away from the city lights if you're in in a in a city, right? Or or a town, or even a small town. You just got to get a little bit outside of town or in, somewhere in the dark. And um, you can use Sky View to find out where the Milky Way is going to be, or you can use uh, an app called um, Photo Pills. It's supposed to be really good. Now it's a paid app, so. Skyview, I think, might be a free app. I'm not sure. Well, the, I just checked, and there is a free version, and there's a paid version. And the okay. paid version in the U.S. is $2.99. Uh, the free version does have an in-app purchase for, but it, but it, the paid part only adds up to one ninety-eight. So I don't know. There's some things that are missing, but try the free version because I think that's hitting all the important things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, give that app a try and see where the galactic core or the, or the Milky Way is. I know for up up for me up here where I am, as far north as I am here in Canada, uh, I mean, I'm lower than the northern border of the U.S., but it's still up there. Right. And oh, yeah. over the winter months, I'm not I, apparently I won't even see the uh, galactic core of the Milky Way. It's going to be below the horizon. And you know, prime viewing of the galactic core for me would have been like July, I think, sometime in July. So because of the way the Earth rotates and moves around the sun and all that stuff, there's times when you're going to really see it well and then times when you're not going to see it well. So you kind of have to, you know, plan the times that you want to take a shot like this. But, a, you know, tripod is necessary for sure. In, in order to get yeah. that 30-second shot, you have to have it on a tripod mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, give it a whirl. So that's that's the Milky Way shot. That's how I did it. Mm. And um, again, pictures will be on the 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 website for the, on the post for this episode uh, with screenshots of the settings that I used in the edit, and you'll be able to check them out. So, Dave, you've got some interesting okay. things here. Um, something that a lot of people probably use, but something that 
probably even more people don't even realize is there or how to use it. Yep. And something that unfortunately has a bad name sometimes where you some, yeah. where you hear some people kind of put it down. Uh, it's called live photos. Now, if you have a phone, an iPhone that still works, you have live photos. It's been around that long. Yeah. And it was a big deal when it was first introduced. Mm -hmm. And I would say it still is a big deal. Um, I always keep it on. Some people say that using a live photo will degrade the quality of your shot. Um, that may be true. There may be a slight difference, especially if you I would say that may have been true when it first came out. But anything recently, I think the processing is good enough. You're. You even if you look side by side, you would have to zoom in, do the pixel peaking, and say, "Oh yeah, that's quite obvious now." But if you're going to do a little bit of editing and everything else, you're probably not going to notice. Yeah, and I know people may prove me wrong, but for me, I don't really notice that much of a difference. But the one thing I do notice is it saves me a lot. <laughs> and yeah. to kind of give a background, what a live photo is, uh, first of all, with a new version. Um, and, and, uh, third party apps, apps can do live photos. Some of them do, some don't. So I always mm -hmm. use this to build in camera app and the way you can see if it's on or not. And I like the fact that it's on, it's one of the controls that are in the camera app. You don't have to go to the settings. If you look yeah. on the upper right, there's a concentric circle within circle within circle with a little dotted on the outside. As long as there's not a line through it, it's available. Uh, if you and you will, if you click on it, it'll sw it's a toggle switch. So if you click on it, it'll say off. Click on it again, it comes back on live. And what happens is, and I think this is where some people don't like it. The minute you turn that camera on, it starts to record. It doesn't save it, but it starts to record. Mm -hmm. So it records, I think, a second and a half at all times. You hit that shutter button, and it keeps recording for a second and a half after you're done. So yeah, it's a video, right? Basically, yeah. So the idea is that you take the picture, the camera, and this is not a part that some people don't like, selects the best shot from that three-second period. So you may get a shot which is a little before, a little after. You hit the button. I, I understand a lot of people don't like for privacy reasons the fact that the camera's up, you'd hit not hitting the button, and it's recording. You know, I know for privacy reasons, like uh I didn't push a button and it's recording. It's not saving it. As far as I know, if you don't hit the button, you don't hit the shutter, it doesn't save it. There's no way to get information off of it. Right. It's just holding um, it in a buffer, but, really. Exactly. Exactly. Now. One of the big advantage for me, if you have kids or pets, we all know kids and pets do not follow directions well. <laughs> okay. As in, let me take a picture of you. Okay. They don't follow directions well. The live photo gives you a wiggle room because after you take the photo, and you can do this actually from the camera by clicking the bottom left where you can select where, where you can go right into editing or go back into your photos app later on. So you can just click on it. And once you click edit a little, because it, by come by, by default, it comes up with, you know, like your uh, light, dark sharpness, clarity, that, mm -hmm. not clarity, um, your adjustments. Yeah. Your adjustments. But if you look to the left, there's that circle and circle again. So if you click on that, you can actually select one of those keyframes. Right, now, okay, if yeah. you have a very, very still object, you probably won't notice the difference. If you have a fast moving object, okay, they're not, the cats are behind me. They're not fast moving right now, but when they do move fast, you can do things like, oh, I want to select a half a second before I hit the shutter button because of a pose or maybe the you know, there's less blur or maybe there's more blur. It's, it's you, you like it a little bit better. So you can actually or, just click yeah, on that. It, and it could be something as simple as blinking. Exactly. 
So you can move it around. And when you move it, you didn't click on make key photo. And that'll be the photo it saves that you can, then can edit. So that's a great help in terms of getting that just that timing issue down. Also, and we've done this a couple times, we're driving along in the car. We see something out the car window. Ruth grabs her phone. Obviously, I don't grab my phone since I'm driving. She grabs her phone, takes a photo of something out the window. Well, we're moving along, you know, scenery, you know, things move. But sometimes you just want to move a little bit before or after. Maybe there's a telephone pole there. Maybe yeah, yeah, the deer, oh, yeah. which are crossing the street, you want to change their position. You yeah. have that ability to make that change. Now, the other thing to remember, not only can you do that, that video also records audio. So if you press and hold down the image in the, in the Photos app, you will get a little moving image. And like I said, if you're taking a static image, you're, you just may see it move and jiggle a little bit. Like it's basically picking up the jiggle of the phone as you're holding it and trying to take a photo. But if you're taking a photo of a person and they're talking or something's going on in the background, it's a little three second video. So that can be a great thing, especially, like I said, around kids. Mm -hmm. You know, you're taking pictures and then and I've heard people who took live video of, let's say, their parents or a relative who passed. Yeah. You have a three second video with their voice on it. Yeah, that is priceless. That is priceless. And yeah. the other thing you can do, because it's a it is video. If you use unlike Greg, pretty much Instagram. <laughs> they do have a boomerang feature in stories, so you can basically use the live video to make a back and forth little Im moving image. Or you can use what's built into the Photos app and either do long exposure or a bounce or a loop in built in. So that's also really nice. And also, if you let's say you use the memories feature. Yep. For in the photos app, if it's a live photo, it may make and of course out of your control because Apple does all the, all the stuff automatically. But it will sometimes use the video, turn that picture into a video if it's mm -hmm. and it's moving. You can hear the sounds in the background sometimes. So to me, it's just giving you extra flexibility. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's it, it's a it's probably one of the best lesser known secrets mm -hmm. of the apple camera app and probably the most underused one uh and, and i'm just as guilty about not using it that much but there's times when i do put it on and uh you know there's sometimes the results they, they'll just surprise the heck out of you oh yeah now there are limitations portrait mode cannot do live photos all right raw cut raw cannot do live photos mm-hmm because with RAW, you're not taking a video. You're just doing yeah. that one shot. Or, yeah, same thing right. with portrait because it has to have the the depth information. You can't do that with a live photo. Right. Maybe in one or two times, but I'm guessing not. Or, or pano or you know something, something where it's beyond the basic photo. Yeah. You can't do live photos. But – and now sometimes – and – this is a this is unusual for Google. Google has an app called Motion Stills. I'd have to sign into your to a Google account. Mm -hmm. Everything stayed local on your phone. What it will what you can do is it does the live photos just like Apple's the built into the app to the phone. But sometimes now, it does this, a little bit. Is this a, a caption or a, a capture app, Dave? Like a camera app? No. Oh, okay. No. Well, you know what? I don't I've never used it as a capture app. I've only used it as a um well, it looks like you can capture it. I've never used it as a capture app. Though. Okay. So, but what you can also do is stitch them together. So if you have oh. two or three, yeah. So if you have two or three uh live photos that you kind of take photo, 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 mm -hmm. 
you can just stitch them together and create a long video out of it. Oh, long as in a couple seconds, but maybe yeah. three, four, you know, but there's no really limit on how many you can do. So hmm. if you have a lot of live videos, you can just stitch them together. The audio comes through. So, and it does a, sometimes Apple does a really good job with keeping the subject in the middle. Sometimes mm -hmm. the Google Motion Stills does a better job where they convert that to a live photo and it looks, they, they pick out the subject a little bit better to make it flow better. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And like I said, you can take, and all you do when you output it, you output it as a video. So mm -hmm. it just turns it into a video. So, oh, that's cool. and it could be, and it just turns into a little couple second video. And again, the neat thing is you hear the audio. So it can be a great way to send a quick little clip of something. And I imagine if you're really crafty, you could make a miniature short film that would last like 10 seconds with all these oh, little yes. live, live photos turned into, mm -hmm. you know, segments of a little movie movie that that's that's oh, yeah. that's cool so yeah, yeah so i mean yeah like i said it, it just and it has saved me a couple of times with shots where and i will also say this and this will i'm going this leads into maybe one of the recent photos i took mm -hmm. live photo saves you if you're not steady oh yeah yeah if you are in a platform that is not steady or you yourself are not steady, the live photo will try to pick one of those frames, which is as steady as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So it will say, okay, of this three second clip and okay, that one there, there's as little shake as possible. It's maybe not in the middle. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a little before or after you took the, you hit the thing, but that is a steady. And a lot of times you're like, you cannot tell that that was not taken from someone steady. Yeah, yeah. And well, that's, that's a cool. great saver for that. Yeah. I think one of my favorite features of the live photos is the long exposure thing, especially with like moving mm -hmm. water. And I mean, you can you can take a I mean, you can the the, the image stabilization in the lady, you know, these later phones like probably from the 11 on up is pretty good. I mean, and it keeps keeps getting better as years go on. If you just handhold your phone and take a live photo of a of a waterfall and and then go into the edit mode where you can switch it to a uh, a long exposure, they actually turn out not bad. Mm -hmm. So now yeah, there are that's... some people and and I'll I'll say you know, Mark is not a huge fan of it. So Dows Mark Sadowski, uh, oh, yeah. formerly of Tiny Shutter, um uh, uh which I understand because he has very high standards mm -hmm. and a lot of times the long exposure is not as good as specter or slow shutter cam. Mm -hmm. Um, but you give out, unfortunately you give up clarity and resolution for easy use. Yeah. 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 And one thing, uh, like with specter is when you look at, a, a shot you did with Spectre in your Photos app, it looks just like a live photo because you can actually choose. Um, I think you can choose the different uh, options like bounce, uh, mm. okay. um, all that stuff from a, a shot done with Spectre. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you can. But uh, but yeah, no, the live photos is a, is a very cool feature. Um, again. I want to I want to reiterate what you said about the privacy thing Dave is that even though it starts recording as soon as you open the, you know make sure as soon as you're running a live photos in your camera mm -hmm. it's not saving it you know it it's 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 not um uh you know it's not sending anything to the mothership or nothing like that it's just it's just getting ready so that when you do hit that button it's got that second and a half before you hit the button already in in the buffer and and then it will be able to just go for that second and a half afterwards and give you that three second live photo and mm -hmm. you know th then you got it so um so that's cool that live photos is a good uh, a good feature and like you say it's been around for a long time i think it came out did it not come out with the 5s or was it the 6 well, you know let me look that up 
Yeah, so while you're looking that up, um, I will go ahead and move into our recent photos and just butt in when you find that, Dave. And, uh, actually, um, the six, the six S back in 2015. Oh, okay. So the six S. Seven, seven, yeah, seven years ago. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So it's been around quite a while and, uh, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. So we're going to talk about our recent photos and, um, uh, Dave, I think I'll, I'll just let you go first this time. Last time we mixed okay. it up a bit. So we'll go back to our, our old way. Now I've got them numbered, um, so that the, uh, the one with the bridge in the background is the first one. Okay. And that kind of leads into what we were just talking about. Right. Because let me bring that up on my end here. So this was taken during the run uh, yesterday, part of the Lemieux run. So oh, yeah. uh, th- so this is right on, basically, uh, it's a road that parallels the river. Um, the bridge you see there is the Birmingham Bridge. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, and I want to reiterate too, folks, look oh, at your yeah. phones. If, you, if you're running oh, the right yeah. app, you can see it. Yeah, or check out the website later on if you want. Yeah, because I know some people do listen to the podcast. Like I listen to most of my podcasts when I'm running or doing stuff. And yeah. sometimes it's hard to or or if you're driving a car, don't yep. look at the podcast app if you're driving the car. Right <laughs> now. Yeah, because I mean, in I'm not sure which ones work, but I think maybe the Apple podcast app. But I know Pod, Pocket Cast might. I'm not sure. I'll have to find out again. But some of them actually show it in CarPlay. Oh, Okay, I do not have CarPlay, so I can't tell you how Overwatch Overwatch right. works because that's what I got. Yeah, but anyway, sorry, I, okay. I interrupted yeah. you there. No, so. no, 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 no problem. So <clears throat> this was during the run. Um, this is another shot where I was talking about live photos. Uh, this was me just pulling my phone out of my pocket, not stopping. So this is middle middle run, middle stride, and just holding it up. And I'm, I'm running into the sun here. So mm-hmm. obviously I couldn't really see a lot since I'm running right into the uh, morning sun. Yeah. Uh, and just doing the swipe to unlock. Not not to, I'm sorry, the swipe the camera. So from oh, yeah. the right to the left. So mm-hmm. so the camera comes up, holding the phone up with both hands as I'm running, hanging the camera, the shutter button and putting it back in my pocket. So I'm obviously not a stable platform here. You know, I'm not, I'm I'm running um, I am not, I don't want to say crazy because I've done it before. Not like the person on the far right who's on a sidewalk that looks completely broken up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've done that before and tripped and fall. And this is getting near the turnaround port. So okay. you can see on the far left, it's kind of hard to see. Those people are coming back towards us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's just, I, I love the look of, the people in silhouette Mm -hmm. kind of running away the shadows as you see uh the run started at 8 a.m so this would have been around 8 30 ish in the morning the sun's not that high in the sky um it was kind of it was kind of a brisk day it was kind of a brisk morning um so you can see everyone's kind of bundled up here Mm -hmm. uh and just the bridge there with the sun up there, I just kind of like the framing of it. Now, I did have to do some editing. Um, I actually made it more silhouette um, okay. than it actually came out. So you actually saw more detail in the original unedited photo. I went a little more silhouette there, and I made it a 16 by 9 shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, just a- because the 4 by 4 three showed a little more sky and there wasn't really anything going on up there yeah yeah i think i probably would have cropped it the same way uh yeah what what i like about it is the way the uh the sun actually acts as a rim light on the people Mm -hmm. other than the the person directly in front of you but the the gentleman off to the right and all the folks off to the left they have that little glow just around the edge of their bodies and it really it looks really cool Mm mm-hmm and so, yeah, did, that you was, no- that was did, fun. did you notice Sorry, something else about this image, Dave? Oh, uh, hmm. I'm the, curious to the, see what you're saying. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> what usually happens when you have the sun directly in the frame? You uh, get that little green talking, dot. And I can tell you, touch retouch does a great job when you do have flare that you can take out flare and you don't notice it. Okay, so, so was, I the, did was use, the green dot in there? It book? was it was there. It really? was there. Okay, because yes. live photos was supposed to eliminate the green dot. Oh no. But it, depending on where it is, I think. Giant, giant, giant green dot. Um okay. between the two people on the right on the concrete barrier, uh, well, not barrier, but the concrete fence barrier on the right between the two people. Yeah. Uh, there was a giant green blob. Okay. So after I did all my adjustments, I used touch retouch mm -hmm. and took out the blob. And of course, sometimes when you take out the blob, uh, it doesn't do a hundred percent great job. So then I went in and I went over it a couple more times. So it looks uninterrupted. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I got I had to do some manual editing to get rid of the blob with okay. with only with touch retouch. Yeah. So I kind of let it do its thing. So you can't tell there was a green blob there, the correction I did luckily, because there wasn't where the green blob was, there wasn't a lot of details. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cause well, I know I know yeah. they've they've fixed the green dot in live photos, but I think if it was not um if it wasn't like say in the sky, which is a very uh, um, mm. plain, clear area, then it mm -hmm. probably would take it out. But if it doesn't, it, like, if there's too any detail at all in the image, then it won't take it out. Mm -hmm. So right, that, that's right. I and thought maybe you not, got away no. with it there. No, unfortunately, I thought you were going to mention like noticing in the sky. Um, you can actually see contrails from the pla from planes flying overhead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or something like that, but no, um, I actually had to do some manual editing to get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's fair enough. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's challenging, you know, looking into the sun like that. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to get some kind of lens flare and, uh, there's just no escaping it. All, all phones do it to some extent. So, um, you know, good job at taking it out. Cause I, I thought for <laughs> sure it was one of those images <laughs> where it was just not there in the first place. So. Yeah, it uh, would have been nice. It would have been nice, but unfortunately, yeah. no. <laughs> so your next image is a bench. Okay. So this was just a photo I happened upon. Um, this was just me walking by after packet pickup. And like I said, their bench on the sidewalk and someone put, and it looks like it's a hair, um, something we put in someone's hair like a crown oh yeah and these purple roses are obviously artificial fake and all but yeah, yeah. still part various shades of purple roses and they just kind of look like they may have taken it off and just put it there and didn't want to carry it around anymore for whatever reason who knows but it was just there and shot it in portrait mode um did do some cropping on this Mm -hmm. Um. Also, did some editing. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember if I did this in Lightroom or not. Just because I love using the dehaze, yeah, and clarity yeah. setting in Lightroom, it just makes a huge difference. It makes a difference where it makes a difference with. Oh my goodness, that looks this compared to this, mm -hmm. depending on how much of a slider you use. I, it just a matter of you know the, the the black of the um of the bench and the purple and just how how well the job portrait mode did on this yeah i mean at the the, the i would say maybe the bottom uh purple dark purple rose looks a little artificialish you they, it looks you know Maybe the bottom. Uh, you, you know, right, you got to really tell. look close to be able to see. Exactly. That, exactly. But yeah, I mean, the rest of it, it did a really good job in my mind with, and uh, you know, with the purple and making the bokeh look realistic. Yeah. So I think it did a pretty good job there. And I like, like I said, you have the, 
the the different shades of purple. You got the black, and you have the trees in the background where they're just starting. Some of them just starting to to change. So you have a little bit of yellow and mm-hmm. um, yeah, yellow and green going on there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I looked at this and I thought, okay, I mean, I was trying. I, I wasn't a hundred percent sure you did it in portrait mode, but I mean, yep. looking at it now, yeah, I mean, it's it's quite clear. But the phone did do a really good job. Oh yeah, you know, like there's yeah. there's slats in the back of the bench. Um, it's not like it it's showing, uh, you know, no no bokeh there. It you know you know sometimes you it it fools you and it shows you a clear part of mm-hmm. the image when it should be blurred, but it, it did a really good job of the portrait, yeah. uh, you know, of the bokeh and, and, you know, the separating things out properly. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's really cool. And I, I really like the, um, you know, the, the vibrant colors that, that are present in this image. Like, like you say, the, the trees in the background with the yellow leaves and the nice purple color flowers and the, the green leaves in there. Uh, it just makes you know. There's kind of a a story to this, and you can make it up however you want. And to me, it just says, you know, it, it leaves me asking, why was this thing left here? Because this yep. thing looks like it could have been an a, an expensive little thing to buy. Mm-hmm. And it makes yeah, me lots, wonder. Okay, lots well, of little details. Lots of little yeah. details on it. Yeah. So it makes me just wonder. Okay, why why was it left there? Was it was it by accident? Was it? Uh, you know what was going on in the person's life that made them leave it there? What did they leave it there for somebody else to find? You know, it, it's it's a it really makes you want to find out what the story is. <clears throat> so, yeah, that, that's a good shot. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, so number three yep. is showing and, uh, some fall foliage. Yes, uh, d- like I said, we just have the the very beginning. This was taken. I believe on Friday, Friday evening. Mm-hmm. And I, this is one where I did use the zoom. Um, not only did I physically move closer, but I used the zoom. Um, but this was also light mobile editing, uh, mm-hmm. just to pop the blue in the sky a little bit more and to deal with a little contrast because I, I kind of softened the colors a little bit to pop the fall part, the like the reds and the oranges and the yellows a little more in the green. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, this was done kind of across the street, looking up at a church's steeple. Oh yeah. So I kind of liked how the trees framed the steeple. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you got one on kind of either side, you can see a little bit of the, the the rest of the steeple coming down the brick part, and the rest of the trees kind of framing around it in the sky on top, just yeah. kind of like the, the framing and kind of okay. took the contrast okay. down a bit. Too. Okay, partner, I got to ask you: Is this the okay. real sky? <laughs> that is the real sky. Okay. That is the real sky. You're yes. not fooling me this time. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I can but, say. That all three images, well, the two images with skies in them are real yeah. skies. Okay, because you're you're a bad one for doing that on me, and I don't even realize <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, but you know what I like about the sky is that there's enough interest in the clouds that I'm glad you didn't crop down on it. Uh, you know, right. it shows that blue through there, and it it, it works for it. So, <clears throat> but I had to ask. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand. I've done it a couple times. Yes, yes, you have. You sly little devil. <laughs> So no, that's a it's a good shot, and the the leaves complement the color of the brick and the and the shingles on the tower too on the steeple. Mm-hmm. So it, it works out really well. All right, uh, so my three, if I could find them here, there they are. Um, <clears throat> okay, the first one uh, is some wood in my parents' woodshed. Um, my parents are, are beyond, uh, being able to pile their, their winter wood. So I was out to, uh, do a couple of cord earlier this week and then my nephew come out a couple of days later and finished it all off for them. And they got about 12 cord of wood in, uh, it all came split and cut and everything else. All we had to do was pile it. So that was a blessing. Um, 
but I when I was piling it in the shed, in the wood shed, I, I just kind of stopped and I looked at it for a second. I thought, that's pretty cool the way all these shapes kind of, you know, maybe they don't fit perfectly together, but they they've they kind of look really cool the way they're uh you know they're just set in there and uh you know of course I, I try to pile it so that I can get the most amount in as as I can, pack it in as best I could. But um it, it just really caught my eye how this one in the middle that looks like a, a curved piece uh, just kind of gets surrounded by all these other ones and and uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. It just kind of caught my eye that just the shapes and the textures and everything else. So um, I think I just snapped it with the. Uh, I'm not sure which camera I used. It was the. Um, it was the main camera, and I believe mm, okay. I used the uh, the two X in the um, mm. in the main camera okay. to get a little closer and. Uh, uh, I think I might have had to, I might have, you know, increased the exposure a little bit because it was inside the woodshed. So it was, you know, wasn't the brightest situation. But um, yeah, and then I think when, when I did the edit, I think I just hit the magic wand in photos and, and mm-hmm. went with it. So, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, I, I always like, you know, textured wood like that. And I think it yeah. just makes for an interesting photo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like you said, det- and also the textures going in all different directions too. Yeah, yeah. So it is. So the grain isn't just in one direction. You have the, you know, it, it doesn't really. You can't really draw your eye uh, other than the crescent in the middle to mm-hmm. anything else. Just yeah, because things are moving around so much. Yeah, yeah. I never thought of it that way, but yeah, you're right. I mean, everything's going every which way, but crazy here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so my next one is a close up of a clematis. These these are still blooming in our backyard. I don't know if that's normal for these flowers to bloom this late in the year because they 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 bloomed earlier in the year as well. Like I want to say midsummer, and um, hmm. uh, I, I was just trying the uh, macro feature of the phone, and um, you know I'm really really pleased with how the macro works in the 14 Pro Max. Um, I think they've definitely made some uh, improvements since last year's model. I mean, the 13 Pro does a pretty good job too, but I mm-hmm. think they've done a little homework on on the um, uh, you know making the uh, the the focal plane a little better in some situations. Uh, it's just uh, I don't know. It, it it would almost be hard to tell if I used a lens or just the uh, the iPhone yeah. on this one. So yeah, it's pretty cool. <clears throat> now I'll say this is that one thing that can be helpful if you're taking pictures of like a bee or a little flying insect. Mm-hmm. Um, because I did take a kind of same vein, uh, not as close as you took, but same vein. Uh, the picture I took, was it like, two months ago or so that I think we talked about the bee with the pollen on it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because like I said, since I keep live photos on, I was able to use motion stills and stitch two or three of those videos together, those pictures together to make a little video of the bee flying around. Yeah. So if you're trying to take a picture of a fly, like I said, of a, of a bee pollen or another, you know, like a dragonfly or something for that's close that you're trying to get macro. Mm-hmm. That live photo can help because remember, macro still is a live photo. Yeah. So if it's like, oh wow, that be it would have been nice if it would have been just a little to the left or look, try it and see. Oh, I can move it a little to the left, a little to the right because that's where it moved. Or the photo it selected. Oh, if I move it a little bit this way, I like the look of it better. Yeah, yeah. It also I'm can help because. That. When you get that close to a photo, to to like a flower, no matter how steady your hands are, you're so close. Yeah. Any little shake can make a difference. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, that that's an excellent idea. I'm I'm gonna yeah. try that next time I do something like and this. It it is amazing, especially in the middle of the image, how crisp that is. But you have the natural bo. I'm assuming it natural bokeh around it, where mm-hmm. the actual petals have like a softener to it, softness yeah. to it. 
yeah. because it's so focused on what's in front of you. Yeah, and I tap to focus on the uh, on the stamen of the of the flower. Okay. Now this yeah. is a little bit cropped off the left and off the bottom too. Mm -hmm. Just just to kind of reset reorient the uh, the composition a little bit, but not yeah. a whole lot to be honest with you. So, uh, yeah, it's I'm having fun with this macro capability. I can't. Oh. I, I can mean, imagine. I, I can use my lenses with a clip thing, but I'm 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 waiting for my case to come from Reflex so that I, I can actually screw mount the lenses on and, and see how it performs that way. Mm. So stay tuned for that. Probably mid to late November. I think they're supposed to ship in mid November, maybe sooner. But mm. so that's when I'm, that's when they're coming. But um, so my third shot is uh, it's. A diesel tank <laughs> but it's um so with this one here we were out at my parents place yesterday for dinner and i took a took the dog for a walk out in the back 40 and there's this um you, you can't see it in this image but to the left of the frame there's a bunch of wood cut kind of like you see in my first picture that's mm -hmm. sitting in this big shed and the the gray and rust, the rusty gray thing in the foreground is like a, a a little elevator thing. You put stuff in it and it goes up and drops it off. Like, I'm not sure what it was used for, um, whether it was for gravel or wood or whatever. But um, but then in behind is this old diesel tank uh, that holds diesel fuel. And some members of my family would use this stuff years ago for whatever it is they used it for. Um, but I just thought it made for an interesting shot with the colored mm -hmm. leaves in the background. But what I did differently here, Dave, is I I tried out that, uh, what do they call it, Phot photographic styles? Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, where you can I, kind of preset and mm, bake in yeah, different so, presets, yeah. Yeah, so for this one, I tried rich contrast, and I really liked the way it renders the mm -hmm. photo. Uh, so I took a few shots that way, and, and uh, this kind of looks the way I would want it to look had I did my own editing, you know, with mm -hmm. the, the saturation, vibrance, and, mm -hmm. you know, all these different adjustments that you can make. And uh, I just really like the way it, it rendered the color and and the contrast and all that stuff. So that's that's probably my favorite of the photographic styles, and I think I'll be using mm -hmm. it a little more. I know. I haven't tried that yet, but it's always something to uh, to try out. And you know, one thing I notice about the the photo is, like I said, the diesel tank, the tank itself looks exceptionally old. Yeah. But it looks like the regulator or a pump, the yellow thing on the upper right. Yeah, I think that's the pump. Looks, yeah. looks yeah, it looks brand new. It does, doesn't it? That's, so that's, it's like, and the and the hose looks like it's in pretty good shape, at least from this distance. Yeah. So yeah, it's so, like, okay, was was it, did they decide just to keep the the tank and make some improvements, and then later on decide not to use it, or because it look, I mean, it is it looks the yellow is bright and vibrant on the pump, yeah. and it there's no rust, there's no excessive dirt buildup, you know. Compared yeah, to like wonder, the tank and the yeah, and and the the elevator shoot part and even the 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 aging on the wood itself on the shed mm -hmm. on the left, so it, everything has this nice you know like an almost like you come across something in the wood that someone hasn't used for you know years and years and years yeah but then you have that bright yellow little and it look now I don't know if that handle is. Was there a shovel on the other side? It kind of looks on top like of the it, pump. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. I, I, honestly, I didn't go okay. around the back to see. I wonder if though if that okay. yellow part isn't plastic though. Maybe that's why it hasn't aged. It could be. It could be. Yeah. No, I'm but gonna yeah, have to so go it, back it, out there and check it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that uh, photographic styles. If you have an iPhone 13, now yep. I don't know if it works in just a 13 or if it has to be a Pro, but I, th I would think it's just a 13 would do it, wouldn't it, it Dave? Yeah, it does. Yeah, because Ruth has it too. She just hasn't used it, but yeah. So it's okay. a 13 
13 series and 14 series. Have yeah. It. So if, if you have any of those phones, um, you know, give that a look. It's, it's kind of, a, there's two or three or four different uh, photographic styles to choose from. And it's, it's a little, and they're also actually customizable. You can adjust the, uh, like the warmth of the, for the, for this one in particular, the warmth, I think, and then the contrast maybe um, to suit your style a little better. And uh, I never thought I would use it much, but once I've tried it, I thought, gee, this is pretty cool. Now you cannot shoot raw with this, but it still gives you a pretty darn nice picture. I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. So, so that's our recent photos. Um, and with that, I do think we have ourselves a show. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Oh. All righty. Well, where can everybody find you? Sure. You find me on Instagram, Twitter as uh, Prof Pod, on TikTok as Prof Pod PGH, and on um, Facebook as Dave Podner Jr. All righty. And I should say, and Vero as either um, Dave Podner or Prof Pod. Depending right. if you search by name or username. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah. And you can find me on, uh, well, you know what? Probably the easiest way is to go to about.me slash McMillan. And I've got links to, I think, just about everywhere there. Um, I'm on Vero. I am McMillan. Or you can just find me by, with my name. And on Glass, you can find me at, at Greg. So uh, if they're not on that link page... Uh, that's where you can find me there. Links are in the show notes. And um, I guess uh, that's it for this week. We will see you all on the next one. Thanks, Dave. Have a great one, everyone. Alrighty, I'll shorten that down. I know you were muted. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just like, ah. Uh. Uh. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, okay, I'll, I'll give it a whirl and see how I make out okay. with this. Okay, one, two, three.